back and turn to the Old Testament book of Joshua. The Old Testament book of Joshua. And then when you find your place, look down, if you will, to verse number 6. Joshua, chapter number 14, and verse number 6. The Bible says, Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to inspire out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now... Behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years. Even, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now. For war, both to go out and to come in. Now therefore, give me this mountain. Wherefore the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there. And that the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, uh, Hebron, for inheritance. Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, unto this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. The name of Hebron before was Kairjef Arbor, which... Arbor was a great man among the Anakims, and the land had rest from war. I'm thinking this morning on the thought of how do we get our mountain? How do we get our mountain? You're probably familiar in John chapter 1, verse number 46, uh, Philip approached Nathaniel. And he said, I want you to come and see this man that's come out of Nazareth. You need to meet this man. You remember what Nathaniel said? He said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Well, just a verse or two down, he found out that there was some good things that could come out of Nazareth. He said that surely this is the Christ, the Son of God. When I read Joshua chapter 14 and verse number 6, it says that the children of Judah. And I begin to ask myself the question, can there any good thing come out of Judah? If you study the history of Judah up to this time in the Bible, it is some of the most uh, depressing things. I mean, Judah, uh, in, his, in his own very beginning, the son uh, was quite a rascal. And Judah had done many things. But I'm glad that God brought some good things out of Judah. One of those good things is Caleb. Caleb come from Judah. Another good thing came out of Judah was Christ, our Savior and our Lord. I'm glad that God can take what looks bad and bring good out of it. He does it all the time. The name Caleb has the meaning of being wholeheartedness, putting your heart in what you do. I believe about three times in our text, Caleb is said to have wholeheartedly followed the Lord. 
Caleb took his mountain because he had a heart for what God had gave him. Christ took his mountain because he wholeheartedly followed the Father. Calvary was not a defeat. Calvary was a victory. And Christ conquered much on that mountain. Both of these, Caleb and Christ, were out of Judah. As Christians today, we are saying that we are followers of Jesus Christ. We are going to follow him to the best of our ability. Well, Caleb was a conqueror. Christ was a conqueror. And as Christians, I believe there are some things that we ought to want to see. I believe that first of all, that we ought to want to conquer our mountain that God has given unto us. I believe that Oakdale is set on a hill for a reason. I do not believe, Brother Joel, as you mentioned about a God, Friday is not a God that didn't know, but he knew everything. And God knew in 1961 that this building would be built here. And God knew what would be going on this day at this moment. God knows everything, and we must put our whole heart in what God wants us to do. As a part of this body, I believe that I could say for every member of Oakdale that when we come on these grounds, we want to worship God. We want to meet with God. We want to feel God's presence as we have just sang in the song. We want that. We desire that. We want this to be a special place, a place where we get to worship God. I believe that here on this mountain, we want to fellowship with God so that we can fellowship with one another. We'll never love one another like we ought to until we first love God like we ought to. So it ought to be a place of worship. It ought to be a place of fellowship. And I believe that we ought to in all of our hearts want to leave behind a place, a place where future generations can come and worship God and fellowship together as the children of God. I want God to do some things on this mountain. I want, I want to see God do some extraordinary things. I, I appreciate the prayer, Brother uh, Noel prayed just a moment ago about God blessing and helping and touching and the church are growing. I want God to give us this mountain, don't you? I want to see what God has in store for my life and for your life as well. So let me put out some things this morning about Caleb and his mountain that I believe that is very important for us if we want the mountain God wants us to have. First of all, I believe in verse number 10 of chapter 14, I believe it is fair to say that Caleb really wanted his mountain. He really wanted it. You know, a lot of times we, we, we say we want things, but our heart's not really in it. But Caleb is just not saying, you know, I saw that little piece of real estate up there and I think that'd be a good place to raise a family, but you know, if it, if, if somewhere else might be all right. Oh, no. Caleb wanted this more than anything else in the world. He really wanted his mountain. Now, why would Caleb want that? Well, we find in verse number 6, it was a promise from God. God had promised Caleb. Caleb, some 45 years earlier, had went into this land. Caleb had seen this mountain. Caleb had come back and told Israel, we can take it. God's with us. Let's get going. Uh, Caleb had a promise from God that God would let him have that mountain. I believe that as a church, we probably shouldn't expect more than what God has promised. But we certainly ought to expect less. I believe that when two or three are gathered together, God ought to be with us. I believe that if Christ is lifted up, surely he will draw sinners unto himself. I believe that the church was founded upon a rock, that even the gates of hell cannot stand against it. I believe that the Lord still adding today unto his church 
such as should be saved. We've got these promises in God's word. And Caleb was a man that really wanted this mountain because of the promise of God. Moses said, God said you could have that place. So it was a promise from God. But it was also a place that he longed for in verse number 10. He said for the last 45 years, he's been waiting for this place. Caleb was there and he had a vision for that place. He remembered 45 years ago of walking on those grounds and no doubt looking and think this would be a wonderful place to raise a family. This would be a wonderful place to live. This would be a wonderful place to point people to God. This is a wonderful place. Caleb would not only had a promise from God, but it was a place that he longed for. I walked through your buildings Wednesday of this week. Much of the building I'd never been in. And I was looking through the buildings and I thought, Lord, I, I want to see Sunday school classes filled up. I, I want to see pews filled up. I want this to be a place, Lord, where people will come to know Christ as their Savior. People that can come and say, God, change my life here. That, that name Jesus was powerful and I've never been the same. I want this to be our mountain. I want it to be our Mount Calvary. I want it to be uh, the mountain of where God can work and breathe and bless His people and God's church can grow that God would get the glory. I'm not in this thing for recognition. I'm not in this thing for numbers. But I sure would love to keep everybody I could out of hell. And I surely want everybody that we can win to go to heaven. I want that. And Caleb, he had a promise uh, for this place. God told him he could have it. It was a place that he longed for. He never did quit longing. Uh, he looked for that place and yearned for that place. And he never settled for anything different. It was a personal matter with Caleb, for the Bible says in verse number 7, he had a heart full of faith. Now, faith is not just believing anything. True biblical faith has the idea that we, got, we, we, we believe what God has told us in his word. And God had told Caleb through the man of God that that was his place. That was his place, so it was a personal matter. His heart was full of faith, uh, and his heart was fixed upon the Word of God. He was looking for God to give him that place, and he was looking for what God could do on that mountain. Who of us knows what God could do for Oakdale Baptist Church? I don't know. I don't underestimate God. I used to say, you know, I, I've never seen a miracle. And really, I, I technically haven't. But I quit saying that. One morning, driving down the road on a school bus, I looked through the windshield. It's a good thing to do when you're a school bus driver. It was still dark that morning, real early, and there hung the moon on nothing. No cables, no cords, nothing. Something that I think is about the third of the size of planet Earth was hanging on nothing. I don't know what it weighs, but there was nothing under it. There was nothing tied to the top of it. It hung on nothing. And if I have a God that can hang a moon on nothing, and I want to remind you, there ain't nothing holding us here either, but his hand. I don't know how in the world y'all go to sleep at the night without a sleeping pill. We're just flinging on nothing. You're afraid of ladders? Do you realize you're hanging in space? That's our God. And who knows what God can do? I'm not expecting Him to do what He didn't say that He could do, but I am looking for Him to do what He says that He can do. And God always seems like this throws in a little extra. He really, really wanted this. Caleb wanted this. And I hope today that we want what God wants us to have. Let me say secondly, verse number 10, he was willing to wait for his mountain. Not only did he really want this, but he was willing to wait for God to bring this about. Forty-five years, he reminds us in the scripture. 
Could you imagine 45 years and never getting distracted? Some of you here, this church was founded, I believe they said, in 1961, the very year that I was born. So we are about 15 years past that. There are a few charter members. I don't know if there's any here right now, but there's still a few charter members in the church, and, and they've stayed with it through the good and through the bad. They've stayed with it. They've kept praying. They've kept looking for God and trusting that God will do something on this hillside. They stayed with it. They do not get distracted. Uh, Caleb never settled for anything else. Uh, he stayed with what God said he could have. You remember those two and a half tribes? They said, we just soon have ours over here. We got a lot of cattle and the grass looks a lot greener over here. We'll just stay on this side of Jordan. We'll go over and help you fight, but we want our inheritance over here. But Caleb never got distracted. God had told Caleb what he could have, and Caleb wanted that mountain, and he wasn't a part of that outfit that said, I'm willing to stay over here. He kept walking with God and marching with God, and he never quit until he went up that mountain. He never became distracted. I believe in verse number 10, he never flinched in his determination. He had faith in what God told him. He had faith. God had promised him that territory. God had promised him that mountain. And he had faith in what God said. And because of that, he stayed focused, focused on what God told him. You'll notice in a moment, mountains are not that easy. A lot of times when I helped in ordinations of young preachers, and I talked with them, I would tell them this as they were beginning to take their first church. I said, you need to know that God wants you to pastor that church just as much as you know that God saved you and called you to the ministry. Because sometimes you go long spells and nothing happens. Sometimes it, uh, you go through problems and, and different things in a church. And if you don't know that that's where God wants you to be, it's easy to jump ship. But notice this man, Caleb, he never got distracted. He was still determined. Uh, he looked. He knew that what God told him to do, and he stayed with it. In verse number 9, he never forgot the day. Never forgot the day that he heard those words, Caleb, that's your mountain. That's your mountain. Listen, we may not be where we want to be, but we ought to want to be where God wants us to be until we get there. Now that's my own quote. Y'all want to put that on the wall somewhere, okay? We may not be where we want to be, but we ought to want to be, we ought to want to be with God until we get there. What are you saying, preacher? He never forgot that day. Caleb never forgot that day. Do you remember that day? when you became a member of this church. Do you remember how special it was? Maybe you got saved and, and, and God birthed you into this church and, 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 and that's how you got into Oakdale Baptist Church through coming to know Christ as your Savior. Maybe God moved you from one church and put you in this church. I don't know, but do you remember the day that you become a part of this church? You become a member of Oakdale Baptist Church we should never forget that day. Uh, we need to remember God's promises, uh, and we need to claim our mountain. What I'm saying, Oakdale Baptist Church, is don't look for an easy way out. There's too many people that are looking for an easy way out. What do you mean, preacher? They're not willing to fight for the mountain. They're not willing to wait for the mountain. They're not willing to, to march up there and claim what God wants them to have. But it's so much easier to go some other mountain where somebody else has done all that. We ought to be willing the day that God put us in this church. It ought to be a special day, and it ought to put something in us to weather the storm 45 years out there in the wilderness. And Caleb hadn't changed 45 years of funerals and burials and all of this, Caleb never changed. 
He stayed. He stayed with God. And he wasn't going to take the easy way out. He was willing to do what he had to do to get to that mountain. I say, let's work for it together. Let's wait for it together. And let's walk with God together. I believe God wants to give us the mountain. Not only did he really, really want that mountain, not only was he willing to wait for that mountain, but he's going to wrestle for that mountain. You'll find that in verse number 12. When you think about Caleb and that mountain, do you realize that everything was against him? I, I, they couldn't have been much else possibly wrong. I mean, he had the low ground disadvantage. In those days of fighting and probably even up to... Uh, the Civil War, at least, everybody wants the uphill advantage. But he is at the foot of the mountain, and they're going to have to climb the mountain. But not only are they going to have to climb that mountain, there are cities up there that have walls around them. And not only are they cities up there that have walls around them, there's giants on that mountain. In other words, it seems like an impossible task. I mean, how much harder could it be? It didn't seem to face Caleb. How much harder could it be? I want to remind you, before Jesus uh, ever got up here at Calvary's hillside, there was 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. Before he ever climbed his mountain, there was 40 days. It's not easy to take your mountain. God's not going to make it easy. We're going to have to want it. We're going to have to be willing. We're going to have to wrestle for it. It's not going to be easy. But it's not impossible. It's not impossible. You know, God has never asked us to do what we cannot do. Wouldn't it have been something when they went out there to the graveyard that day after Lazarus had died and Jesus said, boys, I'm going to go over there and move that stone. Y'all raised him from the dead. I had a flunk, Connie. I don't do resurrections. I think I told you all that about two Sundays ago. But you know what Jesus said? When they went over there, buddy, they got over there, Jesus said, y'all roll the stone back, and I'll raise it up. So you see, God's not going to make it easy, but God's going to do his part if we will do our part. And I want to do my part, and I believe you want to do your part. I believe we want to see God do something on the hillside here. The enemy that we're going to face, but then I noticed the expectancy that he had. He said, if the Lord's with me, I'll be able to do it. I've never fought a giant before, but I know God. I've never scaled walls before, but I know God. I've never had to fight with so many odds against me, but I know God. He knew his expectancy that God would help him. Everything he's doing, he's doing it by faith on what God said. Not what he's thinking, what he's wanting, but what God said. I remember years ago when we were building our home, the building inspectors came in one time. And they looked it over and they said, well, you can't get your power turned on unless you do this, and you do this, and you do that. And if you don't do that, you don't get power on. You know what I did? I did what they said because I wanted the power on. And is it not the same way in our churches? If we want the power, we got to do it like God said. We shouldn't expect for God to turn the power on if we don't listen to what he said. But Caleb is listening to what God has told him. He's listening to the man of God. The man of God, God has told him, Moses, and he's listening to what they said. And he's going to do what God says because there's power when we do it God's way. He really wanted this man. He really waited for this man. I don't say he was a wrestling for this mountain. If you look in verse number 11, you'll see the energy that he displayed. He wandered around out there in the wilderness while everybody was growing old. While, while that generation that he was a part of was a dying and getting gray-headed and wrinkled till every last one of them died but two. And he's still sprinting around like a spring chicken. I remember up in Taylorsville, we had a lady at Valley Nursing Home, and I, I never did know her when her mind was well. But it, she went to school with my grandpa, my grandpa. 
And every time I would go see her, I'd call her name and I'd say, I'm your preacher. Really? I said, yes, I'm your preacher. And she didn't remember me from nobody. And I say, you remember me, don't you? I'm Tommy, Tommy Daniel's grandson. And every time she'd do this, you ain't changed since we went to school together. <laughs> Clockwork, every time. We had that conversation every time at Valley Nursing Home. But truly, here's a man that hadn't changed. And seems like the longer that he walked with God and the longer he trusted God and the longer that he waited on God, the stronger that he was getting, the stronger that he became. And that's what I want to do. I, I do not want to grow old and slow. I, I, I'd rather burn out than rust out, wouldn't you? That's what Oliver B. Green said. He said, I want to keep on going. I don't want to rust out. I want to burn out. I want to give it my best. In fact, we was visiting a church back when I didn't have somewhere to preach that Sunday. And a lady come up to me in the church and said, well, Tony, I heard you retired. I said, first of all, I'm a preacher. And we don't get to retire as long as we're able to preach. We're going to preach. And then I said, secondly, I ain't that old. I may look like it, but I'm not that old. And then she said, oh, you're just retired, a retarded. And I said, ma'am, you must know me well. <laughs> Caleb just kept on. Caleb just kept on, and we need to keep on. Don't look for somebody else's mountain. Don't look for that easy mountain, but keep on. Wrestle for what God wants you to have. Why? Because in verse number 14, Caleb won his mountain. He won his mountain. He won it. That's what I would love to see. You see, in verse number 8, some of them messed up. They listened to the wrong voices, those ten spies that come back and says, we can't have it. We can't do it. Poor little old us. There's nothing we can do. They listened to the wrong voices, and they messed up. Some of them listened to the wrong voices and missed out. They never did get to see that mountain. They never did get to go into that land. They never did get to experience what Caleb experienced. They missed out. And I do not want to mess up. I do not want to miss out. But I want to do like Caleb. I want to keep marching on. Marching onward. Oh, the, 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 I thought about the pleasure of the march. Walking with God is the greatest thing in all the world. Walking with God day by day. Walking with God and trying to do what you feel in your heart God wants you to do. There's no better life than that. If I could be president, I would turn it down. If I could be a brain surgeon, you wouldn't want me to do it. But I, I tell you, it's a blessing to walk with God. It's a blessing to be a preacher. It's a wonderful thing to be a Christian. And I'm not knocking that. I love it because we get to walk with God. That's what Caleb did. He won his mountain. Then I want to say, lastly, he worshipped. He worshipped upon his mountain. You say, now, what makes you say, think that, preacher? Well, in verse number 15, we see that it was the perfect place. That was fellowship. Fellowship. We'll never worship without fellowship. We've got to have fellowship with God, fellowship with one another. He called the name of the place Hebron, which means fellowship. Oh, I want this to be a place where young children can meet God and be saved and never go out into the world and mess up their lives in sin. Never have to bear those scars and to be hurt by this world, but to know Jesus and walk with him from a young person all the way up to heaven. It was a perfect place. It was a peaceful place. Verse number 15 said, And the land had rest from war. It may be tough to claim your mountain, but it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. It'll be worth every night you prayed. It'll be worth every tear that you shed. It'll be worth every Sunday that you were here teaching those classes. It'll be worth every trip to the house of God. One of these days we'll be able to rest. We'll see what God has done. It's not, always, it's not just a perfect place and a peaceful place, but it's a promising place. Verse number 9. Said Caleb, it's going to be yours and your children forever. I want to have a place where we can worship, fellowship, leave something behind. Just 
God for some reason doesn't come back for 50 years, I'll not be here. I sure would like to leave something behind. Amen? I would love for us to take our mountain. God wants us to take a mountain. Take a mountain. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. We live in a day where it's hard, it seems like, to even get anybody to let you talk to them anymore. But God's big enough to handle it. I don't believe we're here by mistake, do you? I do not believe we're here by mistake. And I don't believe that we would have done a better job if we'd have been born 200 years ago. I do not believe that we could have done a better job if we would have been born somewhere down in the future if the Lord tarried. But God saved us. He's put us in a church, and we're here right here now. I believe God's got all that figured out. And God has what he needs in Oakdale Baptist Church to begin clearing us a path and headed up that mountain and see God do some wonderful things on his side. That's my heart, and I hope that's the heart of every person in this building. Let's stay with it. Don't look for something easy to get in on. If it's God for God, it's never been easy. But we can do it. We can do it. We can do it. Father, I thank you for the great illustration of Caleb in the Word of God. Oh, how it has stirred my heart these past few days of studying this man of God. Lord, he wasn't going to build on somebody else's mountain. He wasn't going to freeload on somebody else's mountain. But you told him he could have that mountain and there was nothing else going to satisfy him. Lord, for 45 years he waited. Then he had to wrestle, but I'm glad he won his mountain one day. God, I pray you'll give us patience when we need patience. Help us to move when we need to move. Help us to listen and do all that you tell us to do. God, I pray that we could begin climbing our mountain and watching God do the things that we can't do and seeking for God to help us to do the things that we can do. Speak to our hearts in this invitation. Have your way in all that's done in the closing of this service, and we'll thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen.